Good morning, everyone. It is Brenda Quintana here, and it is Casing Tuesday Day. It's the day when we take a card out of one of the catalogs and we give it a makeover. If you are joining me on YouTube, I am not live, but I'm so glad that you're watching this video anyway. Uh, if you're on Facebook, then I might be live. And if, I, if I'm if i not live at the time, please feel free to leave me a comment or leave me a question and I'll try and get to them later. So what's going on this week in my world? Not a lot. We had a very late start today. Uh, my son had, uh, they had something going on um, testing for a different grade this morning. So he had a late start. So I'm like kind of all frazzled and, and not quite in my usual place and calmed down because everyone has just departed and now I'm getting to work today. Um, I really liked this layout and for for this casing Tuesday and one of the reasons I liked it was I actually was the one that picked the card out of the catalog and that's probably why I liked it so much speaking of which I need to just since we're just waiting for people to get on I'm gonna go grab my catalog which I forgot across the room I knew I would forget something this morning I'll just open it to the right page before I flip my camera around so I can show you the card that I chose and I, I'll tell you why I like it. I like different layouts so when I, it's my turn to pick I always try and pick something a little different because I've been stamping for a while so whenever I see a different layout I want to I wanna try it. Um, so let me turn the camera around and I will show you the card that I picked and then my changes that I made to the card. Oh, can you see my little yeast friend down there? I don't know if you can, where's my finger? See, if you look right there, um, there's two of them, one there and one there. Yeah, they've joined me this morning. See, I'm so well known. I even have like wildlife that comes to see me. Um, on Casing Tuesday morning. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay, so here is the card that we are casing. And if you look closely, it's basically just strips of designer series paper. There's five of them. This original card was actually a note card, but we're going to do the card in full size mode. But it's a nice, um, you know, it's a, it's a really nice layout. If you have pattern paper that has the same pattern in different colors, it works really nicely. You can use it to, um, like if you have different scraps of paper, you could use it, but you have to probably use it a little carefully because it might get a little busy. So you might have to work a little bit around it if you choose different um, colors of strip paper. So what I did with it, well, this was my first card that I did and you can barely see my strips of paper, but I just took a piece of four inch by five inch paper and I cut on the five inch side, I cut into one inch strips. So that kind of allows me to have this um, nice, um, I don't know what you call it, just little gaps. So if you look closely at this card, you will actually see the gaps in the paper and then I just colored my hummingbird with Stampin' Blends. And then I did, um, this paper is the Botanical Butterfly Paper that we only have one week left to get. If you haven't already got this paper, this is a celebration product. So you can get it free with a $50 purchase. So actually for this card, I used the paper in the background, the, one of the neutral sides of the paper. And then on the other side, we have this paper, this wonderful paper. And so I just took my Stampin' Blends and I uh, colored one of these butterflies. So that's how I did that card. And then I used the greeting from the same stamp set humming along. So it kind of all tied in together. So I'm actually going to make both of these cards. I'll make this card a little different with a flower, but then I'm going to make this card again, the butterfly. And I just realized I'm going to need my um, Stampin' Trooper. Let me grab that. Okay. 
you might notice today I have a band-aid on my knuckle let me tell you about my traumatic injury no it wasn't traumatic well maybe it was a little bit no it wasn't wasn't really. Um, I, I was taking out um, the recycling yesterday morning and I was trying to shove more of the recycling down into my bin so I could carry it outside without stuff falling out. And you know how there's cardboard and plastic I kind of shoved in and uh, I, I don't know something like a cardboard or I don't know what scraped my knuckle. And now every time I bend it it's kind of gross you know and I was like let me cover that up you guys don't need to watch my knuckle bleed on camera not so much fun so um let's get started on the first card let's do the card that I did first first so you can get the idea so you need a card base this is soft sea foam this is 11 inches by four and a quarter inches scored in half at the five and a half inch mark then this is the botanical butterfly paper. It's four inches by five inches. See, there's butterflies on the back. That's a really cool pattern too. So you could go either way with that. But I just wanted the tone on tone for the um, paper. So let's do the card base up first so you can see how I did that. So I like to cut from the bottom the strips. And I took this paper and I actually put it in the pattern order because this actually does kind of create a picture so I wanted the strips to kind of match up again with a gap so to do that it's easiest if you start from the bottom and I'm going to cut at the one inch mark and place that down here and then I'm going to move this over and cut at the one inch mark again and I'm just laying it down in order so I don't get it mixed up because sometimes I like to do puzzles but not while I'm paper crafting so I just wanted to kind of keep that in order so that it stays in order let me pop this off to the side now and I'm going to need some Tombow. Hopefully this one has enough glue left in it. So now what I'm going to do is place these down first because there's nothing worse than starting to glue and then realize that things aren't in the order that you thought they were and then you're kind of messed up. So lay it out first and you know you're gonna have to make the gaps pretty thin. So you can either start at the top or the bottom. I don't know why I like to start at the bottom, but that's, that's me, I'm going to start at the bottom. So I'm gonna take some Tombow and just add this to the bottom. Do any of you have the botanical butterfly paper? Do you like it? Isn't it great paper? I love it. Okay, and here's the next strip. And I'm leaving like a really skinny gap. Like it's definitely not an eighth of an inch. It's probably more like a sixteenth of an inch. You can see how this is kind of lining back up again. So I was lucky I had a knuckle band-aid. <laughs> so I had an injury earlier. I always get, you know, in winter it's very hard in colder climates where you get um, problems with dry skin. I always have a like a finger injury in the winter months because of, you know, washing your hands and it's dry out and you just... I can't always moisturize because I paper craft and I don't want the moisturizer all over the the card stock so I end up with um, times when I actually need to put band-aids on so I bought these fingertip band-aids and they were great they came with knuckle 
band-aids and I had never used a knuckle band-aid before and this morning I was like how does this go on like I totally had it flipped the wrong way around so I kind of laid it on my thumb and I'm like oh okay I get how it works now it's interesting how things work sometimes not the way you think they will work so okay so I actually went ahead and I already colored a flower but I can show you how I did that too I grab a piece of ah, perfect I need I don't know what kind of flower this is maybe a hibiscus does anyone have an idea I don't know what kind of flower this is but I'm just using the memento ink and I will stamp this and side oh you know what I could also stamp this right away I'm going to do this one a little differently because see how okay I've got the hummingbird here I was thinking of actually having the flower on the other side so I just you kind of need to lay it out a little bit I think it will look better over on this side don't you think so when I do the thank you, I want it maybe closer to this side. So let me bring this out. See, I'm always trying to plan my cards out a little bit. I haven't actually done this particular card. So this one, let's kind of stamp this. I don't want to stamp it right on my card because guess what? I'm worried that I'm not going to get good... Um, when I press down, it won't be very good. So let me just add that right here. Oh, perfect. Okay, this strip of cardstock is three inches by an inch, just so you know. I also have the measurements on my blog. So this will go here, and this will go here. Oh yeah, that looks good. Okay, so, but let me show you how I colored this. Okay, I must have put my lipstick stamp and blend somewhere very special. Okay, I think I just put them back into my holder. Okay, so this is how I colored my, my flower. I won't do the whole flower, but just to give you an idea. So I'll come along with my lightest lovely lipstick, and the first time I'm coloring, I'm just basically wanting to cover the whole petal. Am I in camera? Okay. Cover the whole petal with lovely lipstick light. Okay. And then I'll come in with the lovely lipstick dark and I'm just going to do the center part. Just going to darken just right next to the center and that dark line and I'll come back in with my lips <laughs> can't speak this morning lovely lipstick light and I'm just gonna swirl around the darkness to kind of blend the dark into the light so it kind of has more it's more shaded rather than just dark right on top of that then what I also did is I took my smoky slate light and to give it a little bit different of a color I'm just going to come along the edge of that hibiscus okay and then that gives it a different tone than just the dark okay then you can come in and with your light again just blend in that smoky slate Okay, so that's what I did, and I did that for, I don't know, I don't like the look of that, so let me just add that. Okay, then um, it's going to dry a little bit, and then it will look a little different yet again. And I did kind of that same technique with the, um, oh, I smudged my 
memento here. Um, I did the same technique with the leaf. I used the uh, two, this is shaded spruce, so I'll come in. I'll just do the leaf here. So I'll come in with my light. Cover the entire surface with the light. Then I'll come in with my dark. I think this is my... For some reason, they look a little different. Yep, they're dark and light. Okay, then come in with the dark, and I'm just going to go along the veins of the leaf. And then I'll come in with the bullet tip of the light. And then I can just blend out the harshness of those lines. So they're not quite as harsh. So it looks more like shading rather than, you know, um, than a harsh line, right? And then, of course, for this little guy in the center here, I just used my Mango Melody and I just colored it in and I colored this little piece in. So basically, I just repeated uh, for this petal right here. I just repeated it all the way around and then for the um, shaded spruce I did the stem. So that's how I ended up doing the flower. Oh and then I cut it out with um, the, it's called the Hummingbird Framelits. It has a die so you can go ahead and cut it without hand cutting it which is really nice and that's the same thing i did with a hummingbird i was able to just cut it out rather than hand cutting out which is always nice not to have to do that so let's put together this card so i did use on the original card you can see there's some twine or thread behind there i find that really really difficult to do but i'm going to do it for you because because I'm just feel like torturing myself today. No, I, I'll, I'll show you how I would do it if I did it. It's not really necessary. It's a very subtle touch, but I'll show you how I did it. So I like to use some tear and tape. And I need to find this first part of the tear and tape. So I'll just put two lines of tear and tape on the back of here and this is what I'm going to stick the thread on you can remove or I'm going to remove the liner and then I've got this silver thread so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to wrap it around four of my fingers a few times, maybe five times, maybe six times. And then you can just, this thread is so thin, I just basically tore it. And then let's have a look. The thank you is <laughs> sticking towards that side. I'm just going to stick it towards the right side because that's where my thank you is. I'm just gonna take that loop and just plaster it on the back. Now I've got some threads that are a little bit loosey-goosey so I'm going to take that one and move it over there. Now I don't like the straight end so I'm going to just pull this back a little bit and cut it off. Okay, So that way it's not actually a loose thread. And I've got this little piece right here, so I can kind of bend that one around too. And then I'm going to, again, just get rid of this end. I'm just going to pretend that there are no ends to my thread. Pull this up a bit. This is just harder to do with a knuckle that I can't bend. Okay. So now you've got that swirly piece. I, I You know, the thing is with doing the swirling around, you can't think too much because as soon as you think too much, it just doesn't work. It's like a really random thing. So just wrap it around your fingers and just plaster it on and don't think about it too much. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So after I did this card, I realized that I would have liked the thank you to end right at the designer series paper. 
So this card, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it right on the edge of the designer series paper because that makes me happier. And I'm just going to lay this. I kind of did it in between the second and the third gap. So kind of centered. So that's kind of my strategy there. And then this, I have to decide where, where do I want this? Maybe like that. That looks good. Then I can take this. Oh, you know what looks really good? which is what I actually did, is I will take some dimensionals and pop them on the back. So then this flower is a little bit popped up. And especially with the hummingbird, it looks good if it's a little bit off the surface. Okay, let me see if I can manage to get enough of these on here. I think I'm going to need a mini dimensional too. All right. Mini dimensional. Oh, I think that's too big. I'll put it right down here near the base of the leaf. And hopefully that will keep up. So then, you know, I'm sure you've seen this trick before. This was not my invention. Someone did this. And you use your... Uh, paper pursing tool and you just use it to stab those backings and they come right off well this one didn't come off let's see if I can get this little one oh yeah so that way you don't have to peel them with your fingernails it makes it so much easier and then you can come in and let me just rotate this just a little bit there see isn't that cute? Isn't that nice? Because like if you were going to do a thank you card set, like I always think about doing things in sets, you could have, you know, two different designs. So, all right. So that's card number one. Let's do card number two. So again, let's grab this paper because I need to color a butterfly. So I find it easier to color the butterfly first and then it because this paper has a lot of stuff going on in the background I find it easier to color first so I'm gonna take my light Highland Heather I'm going to start highlighting this next butterfly I haven't actually decided how I want it to color this butterfly because it's a little different from my other one, but let's just go with the flow and see how things go. So maybe light on this outer part here. And maybe light here. have to think strategy. I'm just going to use the same color combo as before. And then let's take this. This is the light, light mango melody. I'm going to hit these little spots right here. Did you know I used to butterfly watch? It is uh, kind of fun in summer to go out butterfly watching. And I had a butterfly book so that I could, you know, understand the different butterflies and um, actually identify them. So that was kind of fun. I used to do that when I lived in Tennessee. There were some really nice butterflies there. There's nice butterflies up here too. I don't know what kind of butterfly this is. It would be nice if I colored it according to the actual butterfly colors, but it's kind of fun having a butterfly where you don't do that too. You know what? I think I'm going to come in with Mango Melody all down in here. Let's do that. I'm kind of doing this on the fly, deciding how to... Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. It, by just using two colors, it doesn't get super busy, and this is kind of a very sedate, car, like, uh, butterfly and card. It's not too, too colorful. So then, I'm just going to kind of do an initial cut 
around here so I can conserve my other butterflies because you can see hard to see but there's another butterfly right down here so if I do just a quick cut around I can do that look at the back of this paper it's pretty too so both sides of this paper are just really nice and I know this one does not have a die but you saved a little time because you didn't have to stamp this butterfly so uh, now we have to make it up with the cutting so I'm using the Stampin' Up! paper snips for that. So just coming around. I know it's not really a lot of fun watching me fussy cut something, but sometimes it's very relaxing to sit there and cut something out. And I think it's easier to do this when you've colored your image first because you can see exactly where you need to cut just the colored part. Okay, I'm almost done coming around body and now it's just the home stretch the good news is that the rest of this part is fairly easy so it's fast okay there's my little butterfly all right so let's bring in the other pieces I'm going to need for the card. So the card base is Highland Heather. It's 11 by four and a quarter and scored in half at the five and a half inch mark. I've got another piece of this beautiful, beautiful paper. Don't forget to get it. Look at the back side of this paper. It's nice too. All right. Oh, and just a little FYI, there is, um, this bundle, the Butterfly Gala bundle, is not available right now. The stamp set is available, but the bundle isn't. But it's going to be coming in uh, next week after celebration's over. So this is my thought. If you don't have the Botanical Butterfly paper yet, it might be a good idea to get the order placed this week because then the butterfly paper will be gone, uh, but it will match with your uh, butterfly gala bundle if you buy it in April. And um, that this bundle is actually carrying over into the annual catalog. So that's good news. But I know many of you will want it now because there were so many beautiful projects with it and we just couldn't get it anymore. So that was kind of sad, but it's gonna be back in stock soon at least for a while before we we uh, sell make it sell out again. So again, I'm gonna, this paper, four inches by five inches, and I'm going to cut it into one inch strips. So let's do that. One inch strips. I'm actually using the one inch mark right here on my paper cutter to do that. So it makes it really easy. And just one more. And see, when this gets down and it's very skinny, I just make sure that I'm holding my ruler down as I'm doing the cutting and that way it doesn't shift. So just put those in order. And then let me lay this out. I have my bone folder here. And smooth down the card, hopefully keeping it a little flatter. So now let's lay this out. This pattern isn't quite as fussy in terms of if I laid this out wrong, it probably wouldn't show as much, but some of us are a little bit picky about stuff like that. So I, I want to really kind of keep the pattern together. All right, so let's go ahead and glue this down again. 
this is probably the hardest part of this card is getting these strips on here but I just start at one end and then work my way to the other end uh oh the first one is the is the hardest one okay so that's number one And this number two, remember, leave a very little gap if you're using my exact measurements. You need about like a sixteenth of an inch. Next one. This isn't a very difficult card. Neither one of these cards were difficult. I just shifted my paper. Okay. It's kind of fun putting the little mosaic stripes back together. And the last one. Okay, so now this one, I want this greeting. I'm going to have this butterfly kind of coming up like this. So I'm using a different greeting out of the Humming Along stamp set. This one's a birthday greeting. And I'll be boring and just use black again. So let me just look at that. Okay, this just needs to kind of be over on the one side. So let me just kind of align that. Perfect. So for this one, I didn't put that. Oh no, look what I did. I dropped my lid right on top of the perfectly stamped stamp. Okay. Sometimes when you put your lid on top, it hits the side of the ink pad. So you get this black edge around there. Have you ever done that? Erg. Let's see if I can get this stamped as well as the other one. All right. It's almost as perfect, but not quite as perfect as the first time. <laughs> but at least it doesn't have weird black ink spots on it. So there we go. So this one, I'm going to match it up with the slightly higher segments because if I have it down here, well, I mean, I think that would work as well. What do you think? You could do like the lower, the lower part or the upper part. If these two are side by side, it might look nice to have them on two different heights, but for some reason for this one, I kind of wanted it like up higher. I don't know why that makes me happier than down lower. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's see. It's nice you can sit and play around. I always do that. I'm not really sometimes set on things. So I just play around until things make me happy. Oh, and I want to pop this butterfly up on dimensionals. That would make me happy. So I just ran out of big dimensionals at my desk. So this is what I do. Once my sheet is done, I come in and I start cutting up the sides a bit. Yeah, because that still works, right? It just doesn't look nice on the back, but no one's going to know. No one's going to know except everyone that watches this Facebook Live or if you're watching on YouTube. Yeah, no one will know. Don't tell anyone my secret. I don't think this one grabbed. Okay. Okay, all the backings are off now. So then we take this one and we just kind of angle it so it makes you happy. There. See? Pretty. Yay. All right. So those are my cards. These two. 
and can't really fit them all on the screen very well. Let's do this. Let's do this. And this. And this. So there are my cards. So you can see with this layout, you can keep it really simple. Like it doesn't have to be busy. I chose tone on tone patterns for the background and then I just cut them into strips. This makes this layout really doable for most people. It is a little harder to do this layout with the different colors of strips. If you do it with different colors, it's easier if you choose all the same patterns. So you're keeping, the colors are different, but the pattern's the same. This one, you're just taking that one piece of paper and just cutting it up in two strips. So you kind of get the same idea, but it's not as busy a pattern. Or if you really want to be creative, use different scraps of designer series paper. I saw someone did that this morning uh, as one of the cards we posted. And as you know, we have a Facebook group so that you can join us and post your card. And someone jumped in on their first thing and posted their card. And I think that's awesome because that's the coolest thing is when I get to go back, I usually go back at the end of the week and I look at all the cards and I comment on them from the entire week. And it's really cool to see what different people do with our original card. So I hope you will join us. If you wanna join us, go look in the description of this video. And I have links to all sorts of things that you might need. One of them is the Casing Tuesday Facebook group. I have my postcode for March 31st. And when you order from $75 from me on March 31st, you get some clear faucetted gems from me. And don't forget, we have that uh, celebration going on until Sunday and then it is over. March 31st is the end date for that. Well, let me, before I turn the camera around again, let me check to see if there's any questions or comments. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. If you like, and some of you have shared my video, thank you so much for that. Oh, and there's one of my team members, Darlene. Thank you for joining me, Darlene. And oh, and oh, some of my customers and some of my followers, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, let me turn around. If I mentioned everyone by name, I would be here for a while, but I really appreciate uh, being here with some other people, not just myself, because it's it's fun to have some interaction and, and stuff. I hope you will try this layout because I picked it, so I, I hope you will feel inspired enough to go out there and create a card and share it with us on our group. I'd love to see what, what you did. I'll go back at the end of the week and, and check out what you did. And I hope that you have a great day. It is a sunny blue sky day here and I hope that's what it is for you too. All right guys, have a great week and I will be back here in just one week. Take care. Bye-bye.